Yeah, yeah, it's very funny, but let's skip the meme and get right to the topic of the video. Why is Venom loved? Venom is interesting to me. I, like many others, was very excited when I heard Tom Hardy was going to be Eddie Brock in a solo Venom movie. This will be the first time seeing one of the most popular Spider-Man characters in over 10 years, and after seeing the trailers, it looked promising. The movie came out, I saw it, and so did many others. And despite the negative reviews from sites like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, many people still want to see it. And the user and critic scores tell two very different stories. They couldn't be further apart. And I get that most of the time, audiences and critics don't always agree on the quality of a movie, but a difference this big is pretty jarring. After I saw the movie, I thought it was just okay. Not that great, but it had some good moments. But after looking online, I saw a love for this movie amongst the fans, with many even openly admitting that the movie isn't that good, but they loved it anyway. It's rare to see a movie that has so many flaws, and the people who like it acknowledge its flaws, but they still overlook it and enjoy it. This has been on my mind for some time, and with Venom 2 on the horizon, I figured I might as well try to answer the question, why is Venom loved? But first, let me talk about some of the issues I have with it, then I'll get into some of the reasons why I think people really like it. I don't think this movie is as bad as critics say. Like a 29%? Really? This isn't fucking Catwoman or Fantastic Four or Justice League. But these are the things that stick out to me. So if you remember the months and weeks leading up to the release of Venom, one of the biggest topics of discussion was what would it be rated? Because Venom himself is a rated R character. Like he literally eats people, he bites their heads off, he dismembers them. So no one really knew what it was going to be rated until about two weeks before it came out. And that's when it got PG-13. Now I'll explain why this is an issue. And it's not because I want the movie to be over the top bloody and gory. No, you see the issue is it feels like they shot a rated R movie, but then they heavily edited it down to be PG-13. Like I'm surprised they actually show Venom biting off some people's heads, but it's weird seeing it without any blood. Or as soon as the action starts to get ramped up, the camera cuts away or the scene will just kind of end. The best example of this is the first time Eddie turns into Venom. He grabs the guy, threatens him, gets shot in the back, throws him, he bites off the dude's head, then he runs away. It felt like we were supposed to see more there. And honestly, that's what most of the action feels like. It feels kind of choppy, like they're trying to hide the violence. I remember reading articles before and after the movie came out that the director and Tom Hardy both wanted the movie to be rated R. But of course, Sony kind of forced them to change that. Now, I don't know those are rumors or they're confirmed, but it definitely feels that way when you watch the movie. And that's not only my biggest issue, but I think that's the vast majority of people's issue with this movie, even those who like it. This whole movie is kind of riddled with sloppy and clunky dialogue and little to no character development. Well, the character that has the biggest change is Venom himself, but his change is really sudden. You see, Venom the whole movie is talking about how more symbiotes are coming and they're going to kill everybody. But then towards the end, he has a sudden change of heart and instead he wants to stop Riot. It feels very sudden and it's delivered with some pretty bad dialogue where Venom says that he was a loser on his home planet. On my planet, I am kind of a loser, like you. But here, we could be more. Cut the bullshit. What really made you change your mind? You. You did, Eddie. I know that Venom spending time with Eddie and the relationship they build is why he changes his mind, but it felt so sudden. This could also be due to the 20 minutes that was cut out, parts that Tom Hardy said include some of his favorite scenes. So clearly we're supposed to see them bond and interact with each other more than we did in the actual movie. Also, going back to the dialogue, it is really hand-fisted and clunky at times. Like this scene where Venom straight up just tells Eddie his weaknesses, so they can tell his not-girlfriend. No MRI. No, no, no MRI. What? Why? Sound at 4 to 6,000 hertz is lethal. Sound frequency in MRI is really harmful for him. Sound is like his kryptonite? Not all sounds. And fire. Fire and fire. This just feels so awkward and off. Now, there are deleted scenes where we actually see a car alarm hurt Venom, and I think this would have been a better way to show Venom's weaknesses. But just having him awkwardly say it saves more time, I guess. I want you to feel me like my stepfather felt me. Now the pacing is pretty weird because the first part is pretty slow. You learn about the life foundation, you see Eddie's life fall apart, but as soon as Venom attaches himself to Eddie, the movie starts steamrolling from point to point. The last 50 minutes of this movie just starts to fly by, and this is where you can feel like they cut the most amount of stuff to keep the runtime low. Since roughly 20 minutes of this movie was cut, it's right after the first hour mark you really get to feel that. It all just feels really rushed. This could also be why I feel Venom's turn to good feels strange because we don't see as much development between him and Eddie as was probably intended before they got cut out. So the whole last hour kind of feels like a rush to get to the end and to the big battle. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of The Amazing Spider-Man. Now the first half is pretty slow, but then in the last hour everything starts rushing by at a quick pace. As if it's trying to quickly wrap it up before the two hour mark. So those are my biggest issues. I would also like to mention that no one was really terrible in this movie. I think all the actors were fine. But besides Eddie, I don't think any other characters stood out or was that interesting. I thought the evil billionaire was alright, but as for Riot, I don't really care for him. And plus, you don't see him until the final act anyway. Also, the CGI is spotty in some areas, but I can overlook it because it's still not completely terrible. Now, with all that out of the way, I'm going to go into the main reasons why I think people really like this movie. And why some people even love it. 
I love you, bitch. I ain't gonna never stop loving you, bitch. You see, this movie has two things that people really, really like. Tom Hardy and Venom. Ever since Tom Hardy has played Bane, he has gotten this huge following around him. He has a massive amount of fans who really enjoy his work. And I don't blame them because the guy never really misses in his roles. I mean, ever since he played Bronson, I think he's been great in just about everything he's done. Even in Mad Max Fury Road, where he barely even talks, I thought he was great. So you have an actor that most people just really like. And on top of that, he's pretty good in just about everything he's in. I combine that with a character that people also really, really like. Venom, who's easily one of the most popular Spider-Man characters. And I believe those two things alone is one reason why people really like this movie. You have an actor that most people really like playing a character that people really like. And not to mention, in the actual movie, he does a pretty good job. Like I mentioned, Eddie Brock is the most interesting character in the whole movie, which is good because you know he's the main character. But most of the enjoyment comes from watching him and Venom interact with each other. So Tom Hardy playing Eddie Brock and Venom really carries the whole movie. Now the other reason why I see people really enjoy this movie is because there are moments where it is just pretty awesome. And these are the moments where you see Eddie and Venom interact with each other, but also some of the action is pretty cool and some people are willing to look past the choppiness because they're seeing one of their favorite characters on screen and admittedly there are some pretty cool action set pieces and i believe those are the main reasons why so many people like this movie it's because they really like the actor playing the main character and they really like the character from the comics and on screen they're doing a good job they are the best parts of the movie and not to mention there are times where it is just really fun to watch now to me personally i think this is comparable to aquaman because i really like aquaman but i notice all of its flaws and most of the people who like venom are the same exact way and similar to aquaman you got a character that's played by an actor that people really like so that helps them overlook the issues and like i said there are moments where the movie is just really entertaining and since these moments can be really fun people are willing to look past the stuff that's not so good and those are the reasons why I think people really like Venom. At least those are the main reasons that I noticed. If you can think of some more, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. Or maybe you're someone who doesn't really like Venom, so go ahead and leave a comment and let me know why you don't like it. And on the flip side, if you're someone who really likes it, go ahead and let me know why. Now, I'm really excited for the sequel, but I'm cautious. Because the trailers for Venom looked really good, and when I saw the movie, I thought it was just okay. So I'm not trying to get too excited or hyped for the movie. Although I'm happy they got rid of that wig that was on Woody Harrelson. It just looks so damn silly. And I do think it was a smart idea saving Carnage for the sequel, because trying to do his origin as well as Venom's origin would kind of overcrowd the movie. So even though Riot was subpar and kind of boring, we at least know we're going to get a good villain in the sequel. Is this going to do it for the video? Hope you enjoyed. If you did, go and drop a like on it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. I'm not gay. But if I was, he'd be my man for sure. If I was gay, I would be on my knees sucking your dick right now. Are you a bisexual? <laughs> Very funny. I didn't think so. I guess you just like cock.